Sometimes the story of Christian can be really heartbreaking, and this is one of those times. Today, my friends, we're learning all about Christian and the law. You see, there's been so many occasions where Christian has broken the law. He even had all sorts of interactions with, with law enforcement. Sometimes he was held accountable, other times he wasn't. You've got to stick around for this entire story, because if you haven't heard this stuff, you're not going to believe what happened. Before we begin, if you're looking forward to this, please let me know with a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel so much, and I can't thank you enough. Uh, with that having been said, let's begin. Laws are rules established by a society to protect its members and ensure the orderly function of society. Their observance is usually maintained by law enforcement, and penalties are placed on those who disobey the laws. For Chris, however, these just serve as another deterrent in his endless quest for China, and a weapon with which to threaten his real and supposed enemies. As of 2018, Chris has seven misdemeanors, three from hitting Michael Snyder with his car, one from macing the yellow-shirted foe, two from failing to acquire proper tags for his dogs, and trespassing after being forbidden from the Charlottesville Fashion Square, which resulted in him being placed on the therapeutic docket. We've got this image of Chris over here. It says, I always keep my eyes open for crooks who take my electric hedgehog Pokemon's name and put it in offensive use. That's right. There have been uh, quite a few pieces of artwork that were created with Sonichu and the other Chews as well that uh, Christian was never really too happy about, you know? Sometimes people take his creations and uh, they do things with it that he just, you know, never really approved of. Really unfortunate. Really unfortunate. Virginia is under a three strikes law, which usually means if someone is brought in a third time for a felony slash misdemeanor, the sentence, if found guilty, is more severe than usual. In some states, the sentence is life in prison. The rules for this law vary by the states that implement it, some having several three strikes laws. Seeing as how Chris has served only a small amount of jail time, despite several misdemeanors, he may not fall under this category. But since the law in Virginia seems to say a third time violent offender will receive harsh sentencing, and Chris appears to have two, hitting Michael and pepper spraying, only time will tell when he will strike again. Ironically, in Chris's birth year of 1982, Virginia passed a law that would protect citizens from dangerous repeat offenders. Unfortunately, they could not protect Michael from being run over, the yellow shirt foe from being pepper sprayed, and countless innocent women from being stalked and harassed, all things that Chris has done. Now, Michael Snyder, Chris actually ran him over with his car when he was real mad at him, real upset. We actually have a very, very in-depth video all about that event. It's in our Christian playlist, which we now have over 350 hours of uh, absolutely incredible educational content that will change your life if you let it, okay? I will leave the link to that pinned in the comments below, along with the, uh, the, other, the other time here, the yellow-shirted foe. Now, that was the GameStop employee that uh, Christian Pepper sprayed for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Someone in there said they may have to call security on him because he was causing problems. He was upset about Sonic's arms being blue. He ran up to the employee, pepper sprayed the poor guy. All right, we've got another extremely in-depth video about that in the playlist, pinned in the comments below. Go check it out, over 350 hours of this. Understanding. I have been giving him reasons since the police came in June of 2008 and nothing has sunken into that clown head of his. Michael Snyder As his grip on reality, Chris's understanding of the law is tenuous at best and dangerously naive at worst. Chris legitimately believes trolling is illegal. He regularly threatens the internet trolls with legal action and makes no distinction in severity between a troll threatening violence against Chris and a troll uploading a harmless picture of Rosa Chu with a pickle to the internet. Chris himself is prone to making extremely violent threats, such as threatening to hurt Vivian G and her entire family because of her creating the audiobooks. He's done everything from calling the police to convincing his father to write to then-President George W. Bush 
in an attempt to get rid of his Encyclopedia Dramatica page. He has even poorly attempted to impersonate the president in a hilarious attempt to convince the trolls at ED to take down his page, and has attempted to contact the former president, Obama, to stop people from posting gay ads on the Wikipedia. Chris also believes that the laws in Quickville and the laws stated in Rosichu should be enforced in real life. I've got another little image over here. Chris says, not again. Oh well, I'll just blow them away. Violence is comic Chris's usual solution to law enforcement. Chris himself doesn't have much respect for laws and rules, particularly when their enforcement inconveniences him. During his time at Target, he saw nothing wrong with exploiting the free refill policy and loitering for hours at a time in a privately owned establishment while harassing the female customers and apparently soliciting Hanky Panky. Chris often remarks that his emotional state entirely justifies his actions, stating in Vivi the G's aim chat that he should be excused for disturbing the peace by literally screaming, no, loudly in the middle of a crowded mall. Self-contradictory as ever, though, Chris's disregard of many laws does not stop him from rigidly observing others, often with completely skewed priority. In Sonichu Special 4, his cartoon avatar makes a point of obeying the speed limit while on his way to confront Liquid Chris and assault him with a weapon. In a May 2010 video, Chris states that he believes a man who beat his girlfriend up with his bare hands deserved 20 years in prison for his crimes, which is just twice the penalty he wants for smoking one cigarette. Also, Chris has very little respect for those who enforce the law. Verbal combat had started, and during the fight I ran off, still giving verbal punishments, as well as the finger, and many cursy hamehas. I nearly backed up onto him with my car, and I gave him another finger. Then I dashed off. Excerpt from Chris's diary. The above quote pretty much defines Chris's attitude towards law enforcement officials. He feels that it is completely appropriate to flip off, insult, and lie to people who are simply just doing their jobs. And of course, as any rational person would understand, running away from law enforcement officials is a seriously bad idea. Chris is truly a rebel without a cause or effect. The correspondence with Jackie revealed that in the trial on the Target incident, Chris thought that his work with the Pokemon TCG League let him off the hook. In reality, the court probably acquitted him either on a technicality or insufficient evidence. Chris probably mentioned the volunteer work because he believed a person's merits, no matter how unrelated, would automatically make one innocent of all charges. It is also telling that he recounted the charge as soliciting, whereas the actual charge was disorderly conduct. He feels that he was only prosecuted because of his love quest efforts and did not because he was raging. Of interesting note is that the contrary to Chris's general political views, he seems to be in favor, or at least accepting, of gun control legislation. Whether or not he has a firm understanding of what he's saying, we'll likely never know. Interestingly, Chris seems to have a very skewed view of the idea of self-defense, which is exemplified by the acquisition of pepper spray. Pepper spray, like most defensive weapons, should be used as a last resort to keep people from attacking you. As seen with the GameStop attacks, Chris uses it as a mean to keep anyone he doesn't like away. Using that event as an example, the man he sprayed wasn't even near him, and Chris decided to spray a quick spritz on his chest without any provocation. It got worse when days later, he began a commotion in a Walmart using the device. To Chris, it's the ultimate troll and jerk-off deterrent, when in reality, he's waving around assault charges on his stick. Legal Troubles The following is a list of incidents Chris has had with the law. This list may not be complex. In a telephone conversation with Ivy in 2009, Bob told her that Chris had, in the past, six or seven incidents with the law, 
and yet this article lists only three incidents that precede 2010. 2004 On September 11, 2004, Chris was detained at Charlottesville Fashion Square for loitering and continually arguing with the staff over several months. The incident is depicted in sub-episode 1. Chris was banned from returning to the mall on his own and without his parents' company. However, it appears that this ban was lifted or ignored soon afterward. 2005 July 20th, 2005, Chris was charged with disorderly conduct and trespassing at Target, as depicted in sub-episode 7 and sub-episode 8. After two hearings, prosecutors chose to drop the case and Chris was not punished. Five days later, Chris caused an auto accident when he followed another car too closely and rear-ended it. Wait, Chris Chan, Chris Chan drives? Say what? This went to court on the 12th of September 2005. He was fined $30 and had to pay $56 in court costs. 2010 Chris's various run-ins at the game place have resulted in the cops being called on him a couple of times. At least once after Chris called in his parents after he was initially banned from the location and tried to weasel his way back in, and again when he trespassed on the property. Though he wasn't charged with anything on either occasion. On June 4th, 2010, Chris made yet another pilgrimage to the game place. Chris was armed with his camera, and while Mike was concerned that Chris wanted pictures of his daughter for disturbing reasons, Chris maintains that he merely wanted a picture of Mike for use as a dartboard. Still disturbing, but in entirely different ways. Chris was caught in the parking lot despite trying to run away and was questioned by the police, who made him delete the pictures he had taken and told him to quit his crap. Chris made his June 6, 2010 video in response to these events. 2011 In a May 2011 Tom Boys and Tom Girls of Virginia post, Chris said that he has begun to use the ladies' restroom at his local mall while dressed in drag. He recounts an incident in which a woman complains and tattles on me and a stereotypical brute male shouts me out. I felt embarrassed. When in skirt, I am still going to go to the ladies because there is no going back for me. This supposed brute male may or may not have been with mall security. In his three new videos posted after an eight-month-long hiatus from YouTube, he tries to do something which some viewers of The Chandler Show believe to be blackmail. Chris admitted it by typing word blackmail in tags for last of them. However, trolls hoping for a lawsuit saga shouldn't get their hopes up because it's unlikely any of the trolls threatened by it would want to report him given that they've all been trying to get him back onto the internet for months and wouldn't want to drive him off again. Not to mention, Chris probably doesn't have anything on them at all. Note that under Virginia law, his demands are more likely to be considered extortion, still a class 5 felony, rather than blackmail. In the same video, Chris also point blank accused Mike of doing things he shouldn't be doing to his daughter, all while admitting that he doesn't have any concrete proof of his allegation. Given how prone he is to accuse others of slandering him, like pointing out his bad qualities that are extremely evident to everyone but Chris, Chris's accusations are very hypocritical. If Mike did want to sue Chris in civil court, he would indeed have a case against him, as Chris's allegations are textbook defamation. However, it's questionable what Snyder would win in litigation, aside from a PlayStation 3 and numerous kids' toys. On October 28, 2011, Chris ended up in the worst possible scenario, netting a felony charge and two misdemeanors and what appeared to be a third attempt to enter the game place, although all charges were reduced to misdemeanors upon sentencing. As a direct result of his October 28, 2011 run-in with Michael Snyder, Chris had found both himself and his mother on the receiving end of a civil suit. Having been sentenced to community service, and put under probation, and being charged with paying Snyder's medical bills, this may very well have been the first time that he has felt ramifications for his accusations and threats. However, it's much more likely that he simply didn't care or still feels as if he were the real victim in all of this. 
2012 is where we're going to pick up on part two. We're going to be learning what Chris revealed on Facebook, and you're not going to believe it. I'll see you in part two. Uh, hey, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications, don't want you to miss out. Hit that thumbs up, really appreciate it, and I'll see you so soon. Hey, 350-hour playlist pinned in the comments below.